Alright, today is April the 9th, correct? April 9th, Friday. April 9th, uh, your weekly Lake of the Ozark Fishing Report down here. Uh, it is the Big Bass Bass Friday Eve. So, next Friday um, will be the Eve of the Big Bass Bass down here. So, I know a lot of guys are getting excited about that. Uh, it's really lining up to be a really good bass this year. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out and say we'll probably break the record what it's been taking the last several years. Uh, a lot of big fish been showing up. But, you know, first, our water conditions are still really stained. Uh, the entire lake is stained up. Uh, the Niagua's arm are, is probably the clearest right now. A little bit clearer than everything else. Osage, um, you know, I will say the glaze is cleared off though too. It's, it's pretty... It's a decent color. The main lake, uh, all the way down at dam, I'm going to say 16 to 18 inches of visibility. The lower grab voice, like always, is a little cleaner. Uh, but, you know, that's, uh, that's just, just setting up. Uh, that water is warming up, so it's setting up to be great for fishing. The water level is 657.8. It's down about a foot from last week. Uh, they're still pulling a lot of water, letting it out of Truman, going right on through out Bagno. I think today they ran 36,000 uh, all day, and they've been uh, continuing running from 35 to almost 50,000 cubic foot every day, 24 hours a day for the last couple weeks. So, uh, you know, anytime they're going to do that, points are, are uh, fish are going to relate the points somehow. Even though it's close to the spawn, just like last week I'm saying, some of these fish want to go back, but they're going to hang out on these points. They're going to relate to points because that's where all the food's going to be. You know, um, boy, last week, let's see, or this week, uh, did a couple trips, a few trips, um, went way up the river one day, um, kind of extreme trips this week, which is a lot of fun. Um, get to see every aspect of, of fishing. Uh, a guy, you know, he was a good fisherman, and but just wanted to kind of get familiar with more skipping, skipping jigs, uh, flipping under docks, flipping uh, over cables, uh, you know, skipping the baits, you know, uh, across the surface, you know, did them hard to reach areas, uh, and just what to look for and what kind of banks, you know. Uh, and then all the way to the other extreme today, I had a, a young family uh, from San Francisco, California. I had two young girls. One was was seven, and the other one was ten. Uh, and neither one of them had ever picked up a fishing pole or went fishing in their life. So we had two totally extreme, um, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it, you know, levels of fishermen. But uh, everybody had fun uh, today, and uh, and I'll be honest, today I, I resorted back to. As basic as you could get, we were using push button rods and reels, uh, bobbers, and little red wigglers. And we, we caught all kinds of different fish. You know, we caught drum, we caught bass, we caught bluegill. But it was all about the kids, and it was all about having fun. So just remember that when you're taking kids out, especially for the first time, or even just getting them used to it. Uh, don't expect a long uh, attention, you know, for the fishing. As long as they're biting, you'll stay you know, keep them hooked, but about two, two and a half hours, and, and they were pretty much done, you know, but uh, they had fun, we got pictures, they caught some fish, went on their way, uh, everybody's good, but, um, so just remember that, you know, when you, when you have kids out, that it's, uh, it's not about you, it's about them. Uh, before I get in the report, one thing I would, I would say, uh, something I come up with this past week here, I bought a local tackle shop up here, uh, Bryant's Osage Outdoors up here in Lori. Um, I don't know, maybe I'm late to it, but uh, this thing is from TH Marine. It's called a, a Hydro Battery Terminal Multiplier. This is this is something somebody should come up with a long time ago. If you can see it, it, it goes right over to the terminal of your battery, but it's got three different um, connectors. So, you know, you can put your, uh, say like in my boat, uh, you know, I'll put it right on one of my deck of batteries, and I can put my, oh, 
my electronics on one, uh, put my aerators on one, uh, maybe my belt pump on one, or say my uh, onboard charger on one. They're all individual, so if you do have to replace something or uh, reconnect them or run new wires or something, uh, you can label your wires. Say you want to un undo uh, a belt pump or a live well pump goes out, all you have to do, you can pop those off without getting all that wad of different terminals all on just one connector. So it's a really neat deal um, that that I, this is the first time I actually seen them. So um, if, if they've been out for a while, somebody should have told me, but this, uh, it's, it's a neat deal. So if you haven't seen them, uh, look at, take a look at it because it's going to allow you to get your terminals on there and get them connected a lot better connection than having four, five, six of them all piled on top of each other. So it's a neat deal. Um, like I said, it's called a, a hydro battery terminal multiplier and it looks like it's from TH Marine. So, uh, that's my little deal today on a new product, but get into fishing. So, uh, the crappie, the crappie's coming on pretty good. Uh, you know, nothing different on a crappie. A couple different versions. You can just take you a, uh, you know, whatever little crappie jig. This is a little Bobby Garland. That water's really stained. I got a, a chartreuse in black um, on a little 16th ounce head. And I'm either throwing it over brush, um, shallow brush. I'm shooting docks. There's a lot of fish out underneath, uh, say, secondary point. Uh, the big docks on secondary points, you can shoot those docks. Uh, and we have been throwing uh, bobbers, you know, set up about, oh, three foot off of that uh, crappie jig. Just throw it right up to the bank, a uh, little secondary points, uh, open banks with pea gravel. Throw it up to the bank and then just real, really slow. Let that bobber just move along, keep that crappie jig moving, and you're going to catch crappie like that. That's just kind of starting, at least for me. Um, so that's going to get really good here in the next couple of weeks. Still throwing a little, uh, little swimmer. Uh, Kitech makes that, uh, a little 16th ounce head. Um, you know, and it's just a little swimmer and it's, that's more for open water crappie. So, you know, if you see a school out there or you know where some brush piles are, just throw it past it. Let it sink down to about where that brush pile is and swim it over the top. You're going to catch a, a bunch on that little swimmer. You catch a lot of bass too. So, you know, the crappie, they're, they're starting to come on pretty good. Next couple of weeks going to be really good for those. Um, mainly, probably uh, back in some coves, secondary points, uh, they're, they're still staging. Uh, not, none of them are up spawning yet. Um, and the same kind of goes for bass. You know, the bass, uh, I was up river earlier in the week. Um, and been up river for the last several weeks and that water temps oh 58 probably 60 in some areas so you know there's some big females the ones that came up early there's been a lot a lot of big fish caught the last several weeks uh, those fish are going to be they're going to get being close to spawning a lot of them that first wave um, Denise and I had a 7.5 a couple weeks ago in a tournament and and that fish was in about two foot of water about three quarters way back um, under a catwalk under some shade so that fish was really shallow some other fish we big fish have been really shallow they've been up there staging they're getting back there they're probably they're close to spawning there's a that first wave so um, you know but but the majority of the fish are still coming up um, and, and they're relating to main lake points, secondary points. You know, I say that you can catch fish from main lake points all the way to the back right now. But if you're looking for the the big uh, big amount of them, I guess the most concentrated, I'm I'm gonna go with main lake points, secondary points, uh, and staging fish. The ones that are off of the bank, probably anywhere from six foot to twenty foot off the bank, from two foot down. To eight foot down, you know, um, and those, uh, the best place for those, and I don't really see it changing a whole lot between now and the bash, uh, but this week, all this weekend, uh, spinner baits, like, um, 
Just a, I like a big Colorado blade, number five blade, copper hammered blade, chartreuse with a with a swim bait on the back with some chartreuse on it. You know, uh, throwing on a 17 pound test, seven foot three rod, so you can make some long casts and just work that thing slow, slowly back to the boat, try to get a bite or two. Um, that's gonna work best if it's windy, nasty weather, you know, co uh, not cold, but rainy, cloudy, overcast. Uh, windy, that's your spinnerbait days. You know, the um, chatterbait, same deal, chatterbait's been catching a lot of fish. It's going to continue to catch a lot. Just throw it just like a spinnerbait. Same areas. Um, you can also throw in a little, little flatter points too. It's working, but just a, you know, a, a half or three, uh, five eighths chatterbait. Again, I put a swim bait on the back of it and just cover a lot of water with that. You're going to catch plenty of fish. Another uh, bait that's been catching a lot of fish and, and some good ones. Um, last weekend, a guy caught a nine something and anglers, um, and he caught it on a, on a crankbait, a red colored crankbait. At least that's what he told everybody. But I do know people that have been catching them. Uh, we've been catching them on just a, this is an old school red wiggle wart. It's got the black back. Um, you know, just, just a good looking little crankbait, anything red, orange. Um, I was over at uh, Fitz Fishing today making some deliveries, a lot of deliveries. We've been working till midnight every night, um, you know, keeping orders. But uh, anyway, I was over there today making some drop-offs drop and uh, Big Ed is painting, custom painting some wiggle warts right now. Man, they really look good. I mean, he knows what colors to paint them. And uh, Robbie over there at Fitz 2 uh, was showing me them. And a couple guy, a guy came in and bought two or three of them while we were there. But uh, if you're looking for a good custom bait, the right color, you know, Fitz is over there. He's stocking them. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's Big Ed's uh, Guide Services is, is the one who paints them. But they look really good. They're doing an excellent job. Uh, so if you come down for the bass or just come down to fish, uh, run by there and uh, you know they got the right colors and they'll, they'll kind of uh, you know give you a heads up on, on what's really working good on the wiggle warts I'm just throwing it on uh, 12 pound uh, fluorocarbon you know just on a crankbait rod this is actually a stick bait rod I like something real limber um, and just work the points you know you want that bait digging into the bottom you know uh, maybe two foot of water and just work it out till it comes out to where you're coming out them points and it breaks off. That's where a lot of these fish are staging, where it comes out at maybe from two foot, say to five foot, and then it breaks off into 12, 15 foot. That's right where they're gonna be, right on that edge. So as that, that bait's digging into the, the rocks, as soon as it comes off of them rocks and starts to come up towards your boat, that's when they're gonna hit it. So that's when you should expect your bites. You know, there's some days they'll get up on them flat points and they'll just roam around and you can catch them anywhere. But uh, most of the time they're, they're on them breaks. So just keep that in mind when you're working your baits. You know, so either a wiggle art or like the rock crawler, you know, they've got two sizes. One will go about, oh, five to six foot. And then you got another one that goes six to probably nine foot, depending on uh, where that break is and how much you're hitting them rocks will kind of determine which one of those, uh, uh, you know, rock crawlers you want to use, but same colors, you know, until that water really clears up, I just stick with something uh, red or orange or maybe a little chartreuse in it. Uh, you know, a, another bait is coming on uh, really good and always does this time of year is like this here, this uh, crack getter instigator. And all it is, is a, it's a wobble head. It's our version of a wobble head, uh, which is actually built on a zapper head more of a structure head, so it's going to come through that brush uh, a little better than, say, like a football head, you know. And we're just rigging that with our muskrat, or just a green pumpkin muskrat, um, and, and we, we'll flip it, we'll throw it up there, we'll just reel it really slow, kind of bounce it along the rocks, let it sit there, and this thing's just back there, you know, free swinging, and it just gets a lot of reaction bites, uh, especially this time of year. It's probably the best time of year for that bait. Um, it catches a lot of, a lot of good fish. And it's really easy to throw. Throw. It's one of them baits you really can't throw it wrong. Uh, you kind of work it like a jig bouncing it. Uh, but traditionally, the the most productive way is just throwing it out there 
and just kind of reeling your reel really slow, just kind of keeping it just off of the bottom and let it fall back down, hit the bottom, stir up a little dirt, make a little commotion, and pick it back up a little bit, just creep it over the rocks, creep it over through brush, all kind of stuff. You just want to get it in to where the fish are going to be hanging. So that's the uh, Crocodile Instigator. It comes in a half ounce, kind of an all-purpose. Um, they come pre-rigged with a three-out hook, a wide gap hook on it, which is going to work great for, say, muskrats, sweet beavers, um, little brush hogs, things like that. So that's a, a good productive bait. It's just kind of starting um, next week. It, it'll be full. By next week, by the bass, every bait, uh, every bait in a box is going to catch fish. But if we're going to talk about big bass, uh, looking for one big fish, uh, one to win this, or not necessarily that, but say, we're going to say five pounds and above, because that's going to get you checks. You know, traditionally, the baits are going to do that, and the ones you're going to want to throw are your spinner baits, your big spinner baits, a Carolina rig. A uh, friend of ours, Justin Swatch, he won it a couple years ago on a swamp, hog, swamp bug, the big one. I think it was last year or the year before, uh, Smith caught his big fish on a small swamp bug. So it's the swamp bugs proved to uh, catch some big bass during the bass. Uh, but this is Carolina rig. Uh, I really haven't thrown a whole lot, but this is time of year. When it really starts coming on. Uh, this year with the water dirty, uh, I'm just going to throw a half ounce, a half ounce slip weight. You know, I put a bead on there, a glass bead, got my swivel, and then I've got my leader. Okay, now leader with the water dirty, I'm going to shrink it up to about two foot, 18 inches or two foot, where, you know, a lot of years when that water is clear, you may go with a four foot leader. But when it's dirty like this, you want to keep it a little closer to the weight. You know, that's, that's bouncing around, stirring up uh, commotion, you know, hitting them rocks, making some noise. That gets the bass's attention. They're coming in. And then you got this swamp bug back there behind it swimming, and they're going to grab it. This is just a green pumpkin. I would uh, chartreuse up the tail, you know, just get you one of them pins. Uh, right now, I'd probably put chartreuse on pretty much anything I want to use, just the tips um, of something just to get a little... Uh, little more visual for them fish so you know that i'm running a 17 pound main line and then a lot of times i'll go down to 12 or 14 on the leader and usually the the uh, main line is fluorocarbon then your leader is it's going to be monofilament and that's basically so that bait kind of floats that line of floats and keeps that bait up off the bottom a little bit more makes it uh you know look a little bit more natural uh, like that seven foot three rod um, this is just a lose uh, eight to one reel the real uh, ratio really isn't that important with Carolina rig but you want a good long rod you want long cast you want to cover a lot of water this is similar to like a crankbait as far as covering water you want to throw it out there and you want to drag that thing along keep it moving stop it reel back up to it and that thing sitting still then start dragging it again you just want to Keep that thing moving along there, crashing in the rocks, and it's going to get the attention of some of these big females. Um, if some of them are up there getting ready to spawn or searching out their, their beds or working their beds, and that uh, swamp bug, a brush hog, say a, a muskrat, uh, what else we use? Uh, you know, lizards, anything you can put on the back of these, and you bring that through a bed or around a bed, that's when they're going to grab it. You know, they don't want anything around their beds. And by next week, um, I'm going to say we, we'll probably have a few fish, um, you know, spawning or getting close to it. Uh, another a big bait, a big fish bait, obviously it's a, it's a buzz bait and a big buzz bait. Uh, this is a three-quarter ounce head knocker buzz bait. Uh, black and gold is pretty much my go-to all the time. Uh, if it's real bright and sunny, um, might throw a white one with silver blade, but in this dark, dirty water, I'm going to throw this big three-quarter ounce buzz bait. Got a number three trailer hook on the back of it, and I'm going to parallel a bank right down the shallow part of the bank um, and just cover a lot of water with it. Rig it up on braid, 50-pound braid, um, 
and I just got it on just one of these little orange crush workhorse reels. This is an old Falcon, heavy ride, not too much um, finesse going on here. So, but that braid, you're going to want to get these baits back into some of these places where maybe someone else hasn't gotten them. So that's over the cables, under the catwalks, in the shade, um, and try to get some of these big females that are suspended out there. And uh, this time of year is a lot, a lot of fish will suspend on them catwalks. They'll get up against the dock, you know, maybe in the mornings, and then they'll move up towards the bank um, in the afternoon or vice versa. They'll get up by the bank, they'll get a lot of pressure, a lot of people working on them, hear a lot of boats, a lot of commotion, and they'll back up towards that, towards that dock. So just work that buzz bait from the shore all the way out to the dock under them catwalks and you're going to catch them. Another great place to throw the buzz bait or the spinner bait this time of year is the very backs of small pockets uh, off the main lake, off the creeks, in the coves, little pockets with shallow brush. And throw that buzz bait or the spinner bait over it two, three, five, eight times. Just work it over it, different angles. Let it hit them branches. Bring it into it, over it. Let it fall on the backside of it. Just really work that brush. If there's a fish in there and you bring that bait like that over it several times, eventually it, it's just going to tick them off and he's going to come out and eat it. So if you see some shallow brush, the water's dirty, shallow brush, they're going to relate to something. Rather it be a lay down, shallow brush, shallow foam on docks. You know, um, if you're going to get in like like shallow and fishing for uh, these fish right now, that's where you're gonna need to get. Um, now, if it's if it's windy though, like I said, if it's real windy, uh, you know, rainy, cloudy, they're gonna roam a lot more. So you'll be able to kind of get away from these docks and just work open banks, open points. Uh, obviously, just like always, if the wind's blowing directly in on it, they're gonna be better banks than if it's kind of rolling, pushing down a bank. Those uh, generally aren't as productive as a point, whether it be main lake, secondary, wherever. If the wind's blowing directly in on it, it'll push the shad up there. It puts plankton up there, the shad up there, the basher up there. It's stirring up the water, there's a lot of oxygen. It changes the pH. It just does everything in favor of the conditions for the bass. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're out there. So next week the best you can hope for is that it's cloudy maybe rainy kind of nasty and windy the fish will bite the big boats will be stay on the lifts where they belong and you'll have a lot better time if it's not and it's nice out and sunny out you know you'll be able to catch some fish early but as the waves get going they start crashing into the bank crashing up on the points the fish are going to back off and that's when you're going to want to change up and throw a Carolina rig. Um, you know, of course, the jig's not out of play. It's never out of play. A half ounce zapper, uh, either with like a peck of chunk or, <coughs> or muskrat. You know, uh, we're changing up trailers now to the smaller finesse, and we're going with something with a little more action on it now. The, um, the muskrat works great. It's got a couple paddle tails, but it's also real flat and streamlined so it skips and slides under them docks. You know, if you get up by the docks, you want to slide under them shallow corners and try to get that thing back up underneath there, four, five, eight foot back up underneath there. A lot of times them fish are up suspended up tight against that foam and they'll hit it as soon as that thing starts to fall. If not, let it sink to the bottom. As soon as it hits the bottom, just let it sit there for a couple seconds and just give a couple hops. And a lot of times that's when they'll grab it. But uh, you can catch some monster fish staging right now on a jig. So I went through pretty much everything. Any one of these baits can catch you a big fish right now. They're all going to catch fish right now. Only other thing is the shaky head. Uh, the Crocator 516 Shaky Pro with the Zoom Mag Finesse. It's going to start coming into play. Um, and you can catch a lot of numbers on that. And, uh, and still some big fish on that too. So... I don't know, if, if I was fishing the bass, um, I'd have a hard time not throwing a big spinnerbait, either way up the river, um, 
around lay down, shallow brush, or down towards the dam, back over shallow brush, um, you know, during the day. But like I said, if it's windy, I'm out on points, I'm running points, I'm covering a lot of water, and I'm trying to get one of them fresh big females up to uh, grab my spinnerbait. So, man, that, that's, that's about it. I've pretty much covered it all. If we get a chance, I'll try to do one more video right before the bash, maybe Wednesday. Uh, we're actually leaving to go to Table Rock for a BFL Wednesday. So uh, we won't be up here this year for the bash. I hate to miss that, but uh, just, you know, how tournaments are, kind of a little bit of conflict in uh, scheduling. But uh, we'll be down there, but uh, I'll be out a few more times before then. And I'll try to give you one more report uh, right before the bash and bring you up to date. If there's any major changes, really there's not going to be because you're going to have fish. you got pre-spawners now, and you've got some already back in there trying to spawn. Um, so you're going you're gonna to catch fish all over the place. So just, uh, you know, like always, every bass, come down nowhere else you can go than I know of. Have fun, fish all day, and maybe win $100,000 with one fish. So we'll be busy. Yeah, there probably will be. There'll be guys out. There'll be people fishing pretty much everywhere. Just picking a spot where there aren't, aren't somebody, you know, maybe just, just look down a bank and if someone's not there, go fishing. Don't, don't worry about the, the secret spot, the best spot. This time of year, them fish are from the points, main lake points, to all the way in the backs. And you can catch them anywhere and you catch the, the fish to win this at any part on the lake. So, and any, any area of the lake too, rather it be river, Gravois, Nyingwas, Glaze, every single one of them, uh, every arm, every area of this lake has the fish that can potentially win this. So uh, just keep that in mind. You, you can fish anywhere and, and win this bass. And it's been one. It's been one in Nyingwas. It's been one down by the four mile marker. I think it was one out of Glaze. It was one up in Proctor. So every year is the same. You know, there's always somewhere different. Um, but one thing I will say, traditionally, it's usually like a, a creature bait, um, a jig, or spinner bait. Usually wins this this uh, the bass. It's just traditionally a big fish bait. So, guys, until next week, uh, come down, enjoy the weather, enjoy this great fishing, and we'll see you.